What is up, Bessies? Welcome back to another episode. I am Sam. And I'm Taylor. This episode is so highly requested, probably since we started intuitive eating in the summer. Yeah, I think it just took us like a little while to actually like, you know, do it, be in the, like the field of actually intuitively eating to talk about it because, you know, this is our first time where we have like full food freedom and we want to be able to share that with you guys and hopefully help you guys down the road to get to where we are with food. Yeah, and I'm really happy that we waited because I feel like we just have like overall like an entire experience to share coming up on a year of really really understanding our bodies and the way we like to eat to feel good look good without tracking our food Mm -hmm. um so keep on listening it's gonna be a really good one we're gonna get all informative on you because you know like we like to say we like to talk about how we are complete and utter feral shit shows but we do know things we do so shocking i know but we do know things yeah (laughs) Also, I, I, do I have toothpaste on my face? No. Okay. I just like wiped, wiped my mouth and it tasted like toothpaste, so I didn't know if I had some on my because I just brushed my teeth. Anyways, but before we get into like the actual episode, um, let's talk about our week. Yes. I've kind of like a lot to talk about this week. I wrote a few like bullet points down. First and foremost being, I took my first berries class this week and I took it, I took two over the weekend because I wanted to like start my like workout split the right way because I have a new workout split now, but... It's funny because we got called out in our DMs after I posted did, Barry's workouts. Did we? Yeah. I guess like a year ago, we shit on Barry's workouts. Well, you did. She did said, I? Yeah. She said, quote unquote, like, I don't understand the point of it. Like, if you're re- raising your cholesterol as a woman, like, it's not good for you. Like, My, oh, cortisol? Or raising your cortisol, cortisol levels. Yeah. And I was like, oof. <laughs> I was like, oof. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm just like a hit workout, like girly, but like what gets you moving is what gets you moving. Yeah. And obviously, like the thing is, when things like are said, I feel like no matter who says it, like you have to understand there's probably a whole, there's a whole lot of context yeah, yeah, yeah. in what's going on. Cause I don't even remember saying that. Like, I'd have to listen to the full clip. It was like a while. Yeah, I'd have she to said listen. It was like a year ago. She was like, I, she said that like the comment like really rubbed her the wrong way. And. <laughs> She, like, stops, like, listening to the podcast, and then she saw that I went to Barry's workout, and now she's listening to the podcast. Yeah, I mean, but here's the thing. Like, there's so many things, like, especially with podcasts when, like, like you're talking for an hour every single week. Like, I listen to a lot of podcasts where they say things every now and then where I'm like, I disagree. But, like... Which you, but you but you can just disagree and keep listening like i say if you want i'm like oh i disagree but like that's the beauty of this world is you can think whatever you want and especially disagreeing over a workout class i'm not talking disagreeing over anything serious like we're just talking about a workout class like if you disagree disagree like yeah. do you like it, it literally doesn't matter to me like i'm not a hit workout girly i'll go to one for yeah. shits and giggles i'll show up um and i'll try but, I mean, I think it's cool that you go. And it's also, like, everything's always circumstantial. Like, you can't lift heavy right now. So, you yeah. have to go to class. Like, everything is circumstantial. So, like, someone saying, oh, well, this may not be, like, the the best workout split you can possibly do in your whole entire life. That doesn't mean that, like, for right now, for what you're doing, it's not the best for you. Yeah. Like, everything is very relative Which and circumstantial. Which I think I want to also get into this in, like, later in the podcast episode. Like, kind of going over, like, diet culture and how to, like, spot the difference between diet culture and just, like... A diet? Like, yeah, uh, like so doing I, well for yourself? I, I have, like, I found when I was, like, doing a little bit of research before the podcast, I had, like, this little diagram, which I'll read mm-hmm. later. And, like, one of those points is kind of relating to like workout splits and like your workout class or not classes but just like how you're working out in general yeah i'm excited to talk about that because what brought that up to me i had the same kind of thought because leo our king is his name leo our tiktok king like i love him oh my god no in love in love like Like, literally in love I would go into the team. Oh, my God. Yeah, if he was interested in me, like, for in any way, shape, or form, interested in women, like, hey, like, hit me up. I love you. Like, let's get married. Like, we're so down. Like, you can marry us both. You can live in our yeah. house. We'll literally be sister wives. Like, just, yeah, Leo hit us up. But, like, he po- like he's, like, really strict on a meal plan. Mm. And he was kind of posting, like, stop calling me disordered. Like, I'm just on my grind. Yeah. And it was, like, a good, like, and I was, like, yeah, that's such a good point. Like, knowing how to differentiate because he's just on his grind. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll definitely get into that. And I'm excited for that. Speaking of first times at a class, I taught dance for the first time yesterday. Well, not for the first time ever. Yeah, for the talked about that. Anything yeah, ever. for the first time um, at this studio and teaching adults. I used to teach kids like all the time in summer camps and stuff and whatnot. That was a pretty common thing I do. But I've been taking dance class and I've been dying to teach it just to give myself like another sense of purpose, kind of. And 
our schedule is whatever we want throughout the week. So I was like, it'd be kind of nice to have one hour where like I need to be somewhere and have to do something. Um, it's 630 every Tuesday. DM me on Instagram if you live in Austin and want to come. It's a good time. You should show up. It's hip hop fitness. It'll get your sweat on. Yesterday, I literally died. I underestimated how hard it is dancing and talking. I was truly unwell, but it was a lot of fun. And now I get to teach dance and stuff. And it's a it's a good time. And I get to go to the classes at the studio for free now since I technically work there. So I'll be dancing up a storm. <laughs> I'm happy for you. Maybe one day I will make an appearance, but as of right now, there is no <laughs> No. <laughs> I got absolutely no rhythm in my body, and I don't know if that will be changing anytime soon. Yeah. You can come watch. You can I come can sit. Come watch. Yeah, I could. Um, just a little cheerleader in the corner. Um, but yeah. let's get into the weekend festivities. The I, weekend festivities. I'm trying to think if there's anything else crazy I did during the week that I wanted to share. Um, but I we got back from Cabo, so there really wasn't anything. You're so right. Yeah, yeah I know. Like there's I not. went to like a workout class that Friday. Um, the Barry's yeah. birthday class, and then we had Haley's birthday party on yes, Friday. Yes, yes, you're so right. It was very much, got back from Cabo, went out, and people were like, guys, how are you doing this? Like, I'd be dead. We would not have gone out on Friday if it, it wasn't, wasn't her, her birthday. birthday. Yeah, like, Haley's a really good friend. It was her birthday. It was one of those things, you have to go. So, just, like, we're not literally insane, like, after that week long in Cabo, I would have gladly stayed home the whole oh, weekend. But save money. when it's your friend's birthday, some things have to be done and you have to go to the party. Yeah, is I what it is. I would really upset if it was the other way around. My friend like left, went on vacation and like knew like my birthday was the weekend. Like, no, you, you got to show up like, for people's parties. All gotta. of our like all of our friends showed up to the pregame. Like if it's someone's birthday, you got to show up for yeah. your friends. That's just how it is. So, yes, we rallied. We went out. <laughs> Yeah, and then, so, before the party, which it was, like, a pregame, and then we all went from, like, the pregame at our apartment, like, our friend's apartment complex out downtown, but before that, I went on a first date. Yes, yeah, she and did. if you guys are not following the podcast, TikTok, you need to be, because that's where you get all the tea on first dates, boys, and just, like, any other kind of, like, little drama that we just like to talk about that doesn't maybe fully get into the podcast yeah you'll kind of get your little teasers yeah, of teasers. what we're gonna talk about or sometimes like things don't make it to the podcast because maybe at this point you know it's almost been a week ago yeah so we might like or we forget talk about it because we already talked about it somewhere else right sometimes i'm like wait did we talk about it on the podcast or somewhere else and i forget exactly so if you want like fresh like i'm talking we'll make these tiktoks i still have makeup on from the night before like these tiktoks are raw real fresh they're a good time um and we really put those on the internet at our risk i was just thinking about this okay so i matched with someone on hinge who has a big like Instagram follow Instagram slash TikTok following and I just realized like I'm going on a first date with him tomorrow. I don't know if I can talk about it. He'll literally see that. Yeah. Like we're mutuals on well, TikTok. Then some things are podcast exclusive. Yeah, yeah, no, that one will be on TikTok. Some things are podcast ex- exclusive because oh your nails look really cute. Thanks. Sorry, I just saw she just got back from the nail salon yes. and I just noticed them. They're really cute. I, I'm gonna probably get this color for They're a while. They're long as fuck. I can't really lift right now, so I don't really care. Yeah. Like, I was thinking about that too. I was like, wait, should I cut them? But I was like, I can't really lift no i mean like they look really cute um but yeah uh the color of my nails is first kiss by d and d highly recommend no it's really cute sorry to cut you i was just like really like stunned by the i know the beauty of the color they're really cute what were we just saying oh you can't post it on tiktok because he has a tiktok following i can't post it on tiktok and that's okay we'll put we'll talk about it on the next week's episode after i go on the date but anyways this man because i have another i have two men two man's first dates but I'm going to be going on a second date with him tonight. But the first date went really well. We just went to go get drinks at a bar downtown called Caroline's Upstairs. Super cute. I walked in there, Taylor, and I forgot to mention this to you, but I have never been there in my life. You, like, I walked in there, Taylor, and I was like, where the fuck am I? I have never been here. If you need me to reach out to my ex-boyfriend and get confirmation that but you were I there. I think, like... It has been so long. Literally, it was almost two I years ago. There, I was like, I have It was never. almost two years ago. Like, for all I know, they could have changed the front. Like, this was a long time ago. I'm, so I'm not even kidding. And, like, we didn't spend hours there. I'm not even kidding. You were there for maybe, like, 30 minutes. And, like, it was so long ago. And also, you didn't walk up and go right in there. Like, you probably came from our hotel room. Like, because yeah, no it's idea. part of the hotel. Yeah. But I, like, 
literally like like i was walking around i could swear table. on everything and I, but like i don't even think we like saw much of the place like i literally think we went right to a table sat and got a drink because it was literally just connected to our hotel yeah i promise you maybe i don't know i was just like in a different universe i was like walking around with him and i was like because we were leaving so we sat sat down and then when we were leaving we had to like do a whole lap and i'm like right. looking at him i'm like my roommate says like i've been here before and i'm like i promise i'm not drunk right now but like i've never been yeah here. i'm telling you it was so quick like two <laughs> years ago but i know you have i just i know you have i know where we were sitting i know you have but it was so fast and so long ago yeah but like I, mean, I probably wouldn't really remember either yeah no I, I don't i don't but um so when we were sitting there I literally look over and like two of my really good friends are sitting at the table next to us. And I'm on a first date. Keep in mind, like this man doesn't know me. I don't know this man. We didn't even know each other's last names before going on the date. And like Taylor finessed figuring out like his like social security number on the internet. Literally. Because she just knows how to do those things. Yeah. Right before the date. She's like, I don't even know his Instagram. I was like, bitch. Looked at his hinge. <laughs> I was like, I found it. His name is this. He works for this company. He's like, here. I was like, I found it. I and like, he was like, what the fuck? Listen, you put your job in your hinge profile. I just looked you up. Your your company website came up. There was your first and last name. There you go. Boom. Easy. Yeah, that's actually crazy. I have to start doing that more because there's the amount of times where I meet up with people and I really don't know anything about them. I'm like, I should probably say one safety wise and two just like it's fun prepare yeah and fun anyways but so the, my friends that were sitting right next to me and he goes up to go to the bathroom and then i walk over to my friends i'm like i just met this man like i just met him and they're like they're like not gonna lie we're trying to like ease you up on the conversation <laughs> like, it seems like you guys just met because like it's such like service level conversation yeah I'm like, yeah and they were like how's it going i'm like it's going great it's going awesome like and i was like so are you guys going to the party after this because we were all going to the same party and they're like yeah i was like dope like i'll see you there but yeah then i ended up leaving and when we got into the car, because he was going to drive me over to the party, this man literally gets me flowers. And I was just so thrown off because, like, from our perspective, what Taylor and I were trying to get across on TikTok, because everyone on TikTok is saying, like, oh, my God, the flowers are good. From our perspective, it's like, this man does not know who I am. So, like, does he do that for every single first date he goes on? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't feel special in that sense of, like, oh, he knows me already. Like, he's going to buy me flowers. He's just like... Oh, I'm going on a date with a girl. Don't know her. Don't know her last name. Like, he literally had me in my in the contact as Sam Hinge. Yeah. And I had him in my contacts as, I'm not going to say his first name, Hinge. And so it's like, I don't know. I feel like I he's think, like second or third date. I think it's a little iffy. I don't think it's needed. I think there's other ways to do nice things than getting flowers. But that's just me personally. Like, you know, open the door be a gentleman pull my seat out walk on the right side of the sidewalk pay for dinner if um we were talking about with our friends if you happen to be walking by someone selling flowers and you walk by and you buy one that's cute but like showing up with flowers to me literally not necessary i just don't really need it i think it's because to me i see it as a really like a very very nice cute thing and I feel like that deserves like an occasion mm -hmm. or like something like really, really sweet. Like I take it very, very like personal and to heart when a boy gets me flowers. Same. So I guess that's why to me it's a little bit weird because it wasn't like like when I was in a relationship and my boyfriend got me flowers. Um, Even if it wasn't any type of occasion, I still just like really, really like really took it to heart and i'm like this is not something kind of like a random person can do for me i take that kind of seriously yeah so that's just how like, like that's how i see it was sweet don't get me wrong i'm not trying to downplay like his actions and i know for a fact like he doesn't date he doesn't go out like his friends would actually forced him to go on this date because like he doesn't go out on dates like his friends two weeks beforehand made him go on a blind date because he doesn't like leave his house and go out that's kind of like a red flag no okay well the thing is it's like no, I get no, no, no. It's not actually not. I'm just like looking for problems. No, I I'm just know. like you being. Are. You're so I'm just bad. like being a drama starter. No, you are so bad. No, but like just the way you do. Like no, I I even said to Taylor. I, I you said like, he's too introverted no, for you. No, that's what I'm saying. But people always say opposites attract. Right, as long as they're the good, they can't be. So here's the thing. He's not bad though. I no, 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 no. I'm just saying, like in general, like maybe not him, like introverted is good to like but not balance, but but they can't be like raining on your parade being like oh, oh yeah. why do you want to go out you know what i mean so yeah. as long as they're they have to be a good balance and it can't be like he goes out every weekend yeah he can't be like 
shitting on people who want to like be out and social yeah because i literally well he even like when i was talking to him because i talk a lot when i'm on dates and like i'll ask a lot of questions and i'll just like I'll be like the one talk doing a lot of the talking. He was like, "You're a handful." I can tell. I was like, "Yeah." I was like, "This is like you got to be used to this." Like, if this is like a red flag to you, like that I'm outgoing and stuff, like don't take me on the second date. But he wants to take me on the second date, so yay! Tonight. <laughs> yeah, Sam's going on a second date. I um have been obviously you guys know I've been like seeing a dude from Hinge like. She's getting cuffed frequently. No, but like the way like I have commitment problems and like I just like realized. Like, I don't know. Like, the more I'm just like, oh, like, I, like, really don't know. So, like, I'm going to have to cross that bridge when I get there. Like, maybe kind of soon of being like, I really don't know if I can, like, date you, date you. But anyways, besides that. So, my thing, I made a TikTok about this. I use TikTok as a dating app. I fully will be commenting, like, just throwing Riz in boys' TikToks like no other. It works every single time. They will always follow me on Instagram and DM me. Um, I've only, like... Sometimes it's the same people multiple times, but, like, it works. There's, like, maybe, like, five of them now that I just, like, got to follow me on Instagram. I'm like, yes. But the newest one, I saw this cute boy on TikTok, and I was like, this guy looks so familiar. So I click on his Instagram, and I was like, no way. And his thing's in Texas. So I was like, bro, where do I know this guy from? Clicked on it. I see a selfie that I knew I matched with that guy on Hinge. So I commented it on his video. I was like, LOL, we matched on Hinge. Um, and now he's DMing me on Instagram and he wants to hang out and he invited me to go to a concert with him in Houston. And I'm like, I'm not going on a road trip with a stranger. Um, not, not even a road trip going to a concert with a stranger. I just like, don't want to do that. Yeah. Like Sam was like, she texted me. You're just going to stand and sing with a stranger. Like you can't, you can't talk to me like, how many siblings do you have? Yeah. Like, where are you from? What was your college degree? Like, yeah, you can't, you can't do that. Um, but he's like so cute and he lives like not exactly in austin so i'm like but he says he's here all the time so i'm like perfect yeah. when are you gonna be here because i'm like a little bit in love with you like yeah she, but she does need to you you do need to figure out what's going on i know uh, <laughs> I, I know but like here's the thing like i'm just like so incredibly picky when it comes to like actually having someone commit to being like boyfriend and girlfriend and I know, like, people, like, kind of, no, like, casually people, you, date. I was that's, I was literally just about to say that you are 22 years old. You're allowed to casually date. Like, ca- like you're not looking for, like, the love of your life. Like, get, well, I mean, you want to get married so young, but, like... Like, some people just, like, exclusively see someone that's and, like, just kind of, like, date and then it, like, fizzles out and it's, like, not that serious. But to me, like, I just, like, don't know if I can do that. Like, there's no reason for me to be exclusively seeing you if, like, I don't, like, if I'm not, like, in love with you. Yeah. Because it just made me think, like, talking with this dude, because, like, some of the other... Heart. He's such a nice guy. I feel bad. You date him. <laughs> no! <laughs> no, he is, like, oh, so nice. I'm gonna name drop on accident. <laughs> no, he is, like, so nice, like, for real, for real. Um, But it's just hard. To, like, I have, like, really, like, strict criteria for someone, like, being around me, and I guess we'll see, but here's the thing. Other guys that I, like, drool over on the internet, like, don't live here, and I'm probably never even gonna meet them, but, like, this is the first time I'm, like, wait, like, I want to go on a date with this guy, like, really bad, yeah. and then it's, like, okay, like, that, like, because then it's, like, okay, I don't like him, like, that much, because it's, like, no, I want to go on a date with this guy, Yeah. like, I want here's him to come here, and thing. I want to go on a date this with him. This is what I think you should do. I think you should have those, like, conversations, Yeah. You know? like, those important conversations, mm-hmm of like what will give you the ick to like run away because like those are like make or break things for you so if yeah if it breaks then yeah it's over then it's over yeah like yeah you have no one then you can move on because you're kind of like hanging on because yeah. you don't really know like where it's which if he's like then that's fine i could just be like casual i'd be like sick yeah. because like but i think you should have those conversations because it's a fun like night out activity but there's so many out, like there's so there's so many, many options. But that like, sounds so bad. no, but like there's really not because like no, there isn't there because is. like good sex is hard to find. Yeah, guys, oh we gotta we gotta skip to Saturday. Good good sex is hard to find, and it's like really hard to just like throw that down the drain. We gotta skip to Saturday and have oh, this conversation. God, yeah, we do. <laughs> We do, don't we? Because, um, well, first, like a little, a little wholesome news. It's South by Southwest. Yeah. Which is where every single company literally ever, if you, if it's a brand of some sort, it's here and it's, it's hosting an event. It's everything. Tech, music. It's kind of like fashion week, but for like brands. 
where they have like these events and like showcase their brand. Yeah, it's literally any single brand you can think of is probably doing an event yeah. here. Like right Amazon now. was here, HBO Max. We just went to a Bumble event. Like there was yeah, like, there's oceans. everything. Um, so we did a little shoot for a boutine in the morning. That was really fun. I was so hungover. Like I almost threw up at that shoot. Like I had fun. We got good content out of it, but like, mm, like I feel like I was still drunk slash like not really coherent that entire yeah sam was truly unwell and then we went to the pool and sam slowly became better i came became so better so quickly here's what happened guys you know i didn't really think much of it like i didn't like the day was the longest day ever but when i got there me and can i like say what we did yeah okay i don't know if you were you're okay with it yeah we've said it before oh oh we did i thought we did that on on snap no, we no. said it on here. Oh, anyways. Okay, so we did shrooms, guys, for the first time. Oh, yeah, we did, because we microdosed in Cabo. I'm like, because my mom texted me about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, we microdosed <laughs> in, in Cabo. I totally forgot. Which, we microdosed in Cabo and did not do shit. So I was like, you know what? We needed a round two. So round two, we get over to our friend Connor's apartment, and I'm like, let's do it. And he wanted us to take, like, a full, like, full gram. And I was like, no way in hell I'm doing that. So what did I do? Like, point eight. I did point eight. I was like... Even if, like, that's a, such a small little, like, difference. Like, to me, mentally, it made a big difference if I went back down, like, 0. 0.2. Which I am so happy I went yeah. down 0. 0.2 because that 0. 0.8, like, roasted me like no other. So, we went to the pool. And we were just going to hang by the pool. And I didn't think the pool was going to get super busy. But it got pretty busy really quickly. We were yeah. laying there. And within, like, 30 minutes, I started to, like, feel the shrooms kick in. And let me just say, guys... It was so relaxing, like, so peaceful. I just, like, started to, like, my body just started to, like, melt into the chair. Like, I could not move. I had, like, I think about five minutes total where I was geeking out a little bit and I started seeing things. Like, anyone that wasn't doing shrooms, when I looked at them, like, their body was just, like, kind of, like, morphing. Like, Taylor turned green. My friend Hunter, his, his mouth and his eyes were, like, popping in and out like it was weird but it was only for like five minutes and i i took myself out of it i was like sam calm down like it's fine like everything else is peaceful just don't look at taylor and hunter just don't so i stopped looking at them and everything else was just so nice it was so fun and me and connor were the only ones that were like you know having a good time laying there like smothered in the chairs like literally i'm not even kidding I, like, everything I was, like, touching or feeling, like, there was just, everything's texture was, like, way more. I went to go touch my boobs, and I'm not even kidding. I thought I had, like, triple Ds. Like, my boobs felt so big. Um, I had to, I had to go to the bathroom, like, mid, like, that because I was, like, wait, are they? And I took a selfie in the mirror, and then, like, a few hours later, I looked at it, and I was, like, Sam, you were, like, having, like, crazy body dysmorphia. Yeah. I th- genuinely thought, like, my body was, like, all morphed. Yeah, it was quite the scene to watch. I took it too, but it didn't do anything to me because um, according to the internet, taking SSRIs totally like um, like blunts the fact the effects of psychedelics. So I was truly good to go. I guess I maybe just felt like a little relaxed in the beginning. Like I really didn't want to stand up, but that's kind of it. I didn't really feel anything. Um, and Sam is like cracking up at everything. And like she just like thought I was like... I was like giggling at everything. But she kept being like, can you acknowledge me? Because this girl was just saying like nonsense bro and i'm just like sitting there on my phone like enjoying my peaceful day at the pool and she's like laughing saying nonsense and she's like can't you just acknowledge me i was like what do you want me to say to you like literally like, <laughs> my biggest thing was like the whole entire time like i would like i would like think of something and then like i would half say it out loud so the conversation made no sense i'd be like i'd be like looking at like a tree and be like wow that tree like in my head i'd be like wow that tree is like so cool and then i'd be like t- i'd say like the rest of the sentence to like taylor and like she would just look at me look away look back at her phone and i'm like can you just like acknowledge like i just wanted her to be like you're so right or like yeah so nice but like, and uh-huh. and i was like the way i feel like you think i'm being like that i'm like in an awful mood because no, you were like yeah you're ever. like i wish you felt like i did right now i was like i feel fine like i feel like you think i'm sitting here hating my life i'm having a great day by the pool i'm just not like on your level but i'm having a great day but like she was truly like, i've never seen someone giggle <laughs> so much in one sitting like and just be so happy the weird thing though when i realized about shrooms is like you don't like crave food you just like crave like um like nature like it was so crazy nature was just the best thing so we ordered uber eats it was like 
it didn't hit. I was like kind of upset about it. I was like, damn. Like I, I, ordered, I ordered my favorite thing too. Like my favorite tacos did not hit. So around five, I was like, Taylor, we need to leave. And I was like, you need to drive my car. There's no way I'm driving. Yeah, I <laughs> and drove. I put the window down. The breeze on my face. The like the colors of the grass and the flowers and everything. Oh my God, it was the best car ride home ever. Yeah, it was so funny to watch. And then our friends came over and then Hunter took shrooms. So everyone was on shrooms except for me. And it was like really just making me anxious. I was like, you guys are like really a lot for me right now. And like, it was, I don't know why. Like sometimes I just get anxious around like drugs. And like, I don't know. I was just getting so in my head because I did take them. So even though I didn't feel anything, I was just getting so in my head because they'd be like, the sunset's so pretty and the sunset was so pretty like the way any sunset is like so beautiful and like the view of the sunset off my balcony is always gorgeous i don't know why i don't sit there every single day it's always beautiful so in my head i'm like okay like it is so beautiful but like is it am i seeing it how they see it like do i feel the shrooms like no it's just pretty and i was like no like it's literally just a pretty sunset like you're looking at a pretty sunset like why and you guys are like oh my god the plane looks so pretty and like it did like the plane would do like it did like it was really nice like and i was just getting so in my head on if like i was like feeling the shrooms or if i wasn't because then like the weather was so nice and the breeze and like you guys would be like wow the breeze feels so good like the weather feels so nice i was like yeah like shit like am i on shrooms and it's like no it's just a nice day and you're watching the sunset like relax like <laughs> like it's really okay you have to like go like i don't even know no like, i went downstairs to get water and then i was like i'm just gonna chill here for a second but then it made it worse being downstairs like on my phone because then i was alone yeah and when i'm alone like i don't know you i like being think. in the yeah, yeah like i can't just be sitting there you with my get, own like, thoughts distracted, yeah. so i'm like okay i need to go back up because i thought i'd feel better i was like sitting this close here going down to find you because you were gone for a while and i looked at the boys and i was like guys like she's really paranoid right now like she's a little anxious so like stop talking about it to her and i was like should i go down there i was like but then i was like no if i go down there because she's running away from me like i'm the problem like, <laughs> <laughs> it's me i'm i'm the problem, like, I'm the problem. she's trying to get away from me like, I'm up. no but i was me. like yeah like you guys are just like a little bit much right now like it was just hard to keep being on people's energy like you weren't at that level of like best day ever i was like i just kind of want to go to bed like yeah. and like they're on the balcony attached to my room so for a second i was just laying in my bed and everyone's like where did you go i'm like i just want to sit here for a second yeah. like you guys be on drugs out there I'm going to sit in here on my yeah. bed and relax. But it was definitely funny to watch. Like, it was I'm honestly hilarious. I'm do it, like, once a month. Yeah, Sam had the best day of her whole entire like, life. It made me appreciate things so much. Like, like I just appreciated life that day. Yeah, it was really, it was cool to watch them, like, be so happy before I got a little bit sick of it. But, and we almost went out. Thank God we fucking didn't because... There is something. Oh, I crashed like a few hours after that. There is something about being home early, doing nothing in your bed. There's really something about it. My social battery, my social battery was at like negative five and needed to recharge so bad. So it felt so good to mm -hmm. be home. And the next day, the most exciting thing that happened was we met Lauren and Michael from the Skinny Confidential, which was so fun. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, so sweet very she was so nice um talking to us like both of them like were so nice and i like them so much and like look up to them so much that before we got there i literally told sam i was like if they're like rude and not nice it's gonna like really upset me because like you know when you like someone online like you just hope they're nice in real life or else that kind of ruins everything and they were very nice yeah and i am not very big on listening to podcasts by any means like i tried to get into the skinny confidential yeah confidential some episodes when there's like a really interesting topic i mm -hmm. will listen but i can't listen to the whole thing but um no it was nice i i got a lot of motivation from it when it was a, the live podcast it was more of like how they became successful and like advice they yeah. can give like us for success with like our podcast and stuff so it was just motivating yeah the biggest thing he said that stuck out to me was that you could literally double your lifetime like you could live your lifetime again and you would still be so young yeah. and i'm like i could literally live this entire lifetime i've already lived double my life i'm only 42 yeah. like the people like i watch summer house like the people in summer house are 40 yeah like and they're young like That's they're so not crazy. old and like you i could live my entire life again and still be 42 he was like you guys have so much time mm -hmm. i was like holy shit like when you put it that way yeah. i guess i am really fucking young like, it really just kind of, like, calmed me so much. I was like, yeah, you're so right. Like, what yeah. the fuck? I even made a TikTok about it on Friday because the audio was like, 
I have, I'm 22 and I have no idea what I'm doing with the rest of my life and that's okay. And I literally put like, my brain isn't even fully formed yet. Your brain fully forms at 25. Mm -hmm. Like literally my brain isn't fully formed. Why am I so stressed? Yeah. Like I'm still a child. <laughs> so oh, yeah, just remember you're young as fuck and it's okay. Yeah. Even like another example is like Christian Guzman. Like he literally just turns 30 and like I'm 24 mm -hmm. and like his success, like I have another five years of my life, well, mm -hmm. six years of my life to get to hit. Well, obviously I don't expect myself to get to his success, but like more of a success than I am at already at yeah. right now. Like, you know, it's just like mm -hmm. age is just a number and like you have so much time to live. Yeah. Like, to be where you want to be. Yeah. And with our podcast, like I looked at Sam when they said how they've been doing the standing confidential for seven years. Oh, I'm like, wow. bro, they've been doing we it for seven two. fucking years. And like two in June. And we were like, wow, like we would love to do an event at South by next year. Like, that'd be crazy if we can partner with a brand and do an event exactly how they did. Like do something cool. And it's like, wow, but like this is seven years yeah. in. Like, so it's just crazy to when you put it into perspective. Like seven years ago, where was I? Middle school? Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> like there's just so much time so it, it was nice to hear them speak and it was nice to speak to her and have them just be like such nice nice people agreed um so before we even like get into like the topics of this week are you good on like the whole yeah. week catch up i don't think i have anything else to say cool so i kind of wanted to touch base on two things before that because um there was this like tiktok that absolutely blew up on the fitness side of things on tiktok and it was just addressing how like so many women in the fitness industry are like using steroids and such whatever and they're not open about it but before we get into that i want to like talk about like the all or nothing mentality that has really been going on too on the fitness side of things and like i just so the reason i bring this up is because obviously the tiktok that was made about us that we talked about last week then i went back to it because i was like you know what i want to see like who's commenting yeah you're so commenting. brave i know well, I don't, the thing is like those, sh like, it's just stupid. Like I'm actually laughing at the fact that these people actually have this mindset. So yeah. there's these, a content creator, well, two, they have one count together and she comments, awesome to have balance, but don't promote balance by getting drunk two times out of the week. Might as well not even work out at that point. Like two, you, two times out of the week to drink and I might as well never work, work out ever again. Like what's the point in it? Yeah. That's honestly like so incredibly toxic and the fact that a lot of the creators that it has, that, like, so many likes. it has so many likes and all of this to say that because you do a few things not healthy because it doesn't have to be alcohol right let's say you like no matter what it is let's say you eat at a restaurant twice that means you shouldn't even work out like yeah like to you say jewel twice well actually people jewel fucking every day because you like to say well you do this so you might as well give up on everything is the most harmful piece of fitness advice i could ever imagine every piece of fitness advice you've heard us say it a million times it's always what small things can you add to your life to make it better not you literally if you do one or two things wrong a few times a month or once a week you might as well give up on everything that is a whole load of shit like a lot of women fitness influencers and keep in mind, I have been there. Like, I have been that individual that has had this mindset, and I'm so happy I'm out of it. But it's, I got to that point because of the content creators I followed that also pushed this mindset. And it's that you got to go to the gym, you got to be doing everything and like the all or nothing mentality to look a certain way. And that's how you're going to be your happiness, mm -hmm. happiest. And it's like, that's not how you're going to be your happiest. Like, I'm at my happiest because I go to the gym for fun. I don't track food anymore. I'm not focused on food 24 seven. And I now have a bigger social life. I have friends, I have family that I'm like constantly talking to. And it's like, when I was the all or nothing in the gym, it was the complete opposite of that. Yeah. And to think that so many people struggle, like I'd say one of the biggest struggles of people getting started is I'm going to work out six days a week and not drink. Oh fuck. I went to a party. I give up. Or I went to a party, I need to go to the gym an extra hour. Now. Yeah, and so many people, like, do that one thing off and just give up mm -hmm. because you failed. They're going to, like, let's say they on a workout journey, there's a party, I'm not drinking on Saturday, I'm not drinking on Saturday, they drink, and then it all goes to shit. The next day, they're like, fuck it, I'm just not going to go, I'm going to eat, doesn't matter, I failed, fuck it, scratching it. And, and to keep promoting that narrative is so fucked. And that's why a lot of, like, like, I hate to say this. I really, really do hate to say this. But, like, that's why a lot of content creators 
that we meet in person like have this constant binge restrict lifestyle Cycle. that is constantly going on behind the scenes that you do not see and it's like it's sad to see but it's also like you these content creators need to take accountability for what they're pushing out there because it's not a healthy lifestyle whatsoever to live like yeah there's a difference between like bikini prep yes like sure there are gonna be sacrifices that these individuals have to make for that but you also have to remember like someone myself i'm not bikini prep like i'm yeah. lifestyle like or i can go to the gym and drink on the weekends What's yeah wrong with that or i'm not even i'm not against little like challenges either i know some people really like hate 75 hard but i think some people do 75 hard and 75 hard in a totally healthy way like for some people it causes no in- issues for them they're simply putting themselves trying to discipline themselves and they come out of it totally fine and like there's nothing wrong with discipline if you're like hey this month like we did dry january i made it to the 27th okay sue me but like doing a 30-day challenge like being on it for a certain time and being like you know right now i'm doing it like i'm in my grind i'm doing it i'm taking this little time to to be my best i'm giving up this i'm giving up that like little eras in your life where you're like doing certain things cool but like we are always talking in grand big big picture of your entire life and how are we going to live for our entire life i can live the way i am now for my entire life oh 100 this this is more than sustainable and eventually guys like eventually yeah i probably will drink less because i'll be a wife and have kids and like not be going to latchkey every saturday like, like let's be for telling, real but i'm 22 years old I'm like imagine telling a 20 year like a young 20 year old that they can't go out on the weekends and drink and go to the gym at the same time like you might as well not work out at that you point. might as well not work out like what your workouts are just as good um hate to hype myself up i'm literally fucking jacked the pit the oh my god the way i looked in the gym today fuck i look literally so good and like i'll gas myself up my physique is genuinely the best it's ever been because i have no fucking stress like i my body feels so good my digestion is perfect my energy is pretty good actually i drink a lot of caffeine but like not even because i need it just because i like don't drink that much caffeine. no yeah not compared to, to a, lot, a lot to us is a lot but i'm saying like i mostly drink a lot of coffees or celsius because i like think they taste good like that's yeah. kind of why i drink a lot of caffeinated drinks because i like the way they taste but like my natural energy is up my workouts are great my strength is great my physique is great and it's genuinely because i barely give a shit about anything yeah and when i was so all or nothing i was bloated I was tired. I was irritable. I was angry. I was depressed. Like, I'm literally not depressed anymore. I'm not anxious. I can't remember the last time that I felt, like, insecure about, like, my body image. Like, I just feel great. Yeah. And going, like, off of this, I want to, like, kind of touch base before we get into, like, toxic things. Because, obviously, we just kind of rambled about toxic things for a little bit. But I want to talk about, like, how to spot diet culture. Because... You may be like in diet culture or you may see a content creator promoting diet culture without even really noticing it. So we kind of want this to be like a wake up call for anyone out there listening to this podcast. Um, So I have like a list and we can kind of just like ramble off of like these little things. Um, But like number one is going to be those sneaky words for dieting such as clean eating, detox, reset, wellness um, or like wellness protocols. And like. Yes, you can kind of, like, name the way you're eating or, like, name the type of diet that you're consuming. But also, I cannot stand, like, full days of eatings, like, by content creators that are, like, like, what what's the one that's so trendy right now Like that girls will say for, like, full days of eatings? Like, gut healthy or gut fucking... Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like resetting my gut. Like, yeah, gut. like resetting my gut, like, gut-friendly meals or gut-friendly this, gut-friendly that. It's, like... You're I dieting. Why we need to put a label on everything we do. Um, so that is just one to keep in mind. Number two is your food tracking, tracking calories or macros at any way to be in control. Like if you are tracking your food to be in control, that is something that you need to kind of like step back and look on because this is where you are taking diet culture and you want it. We want you like throughout this conversation to transition into intuitive eating. So if any of these things like trigger you and this is what you're doing, but you're trying to intuitive eat, you're not intuitive eating. Like now that we're intuitive eating, like 
we are not counting calories or tracking for the control aspect right. of it. Right. And we used to count macros and calories um, in the beginning. For me, it was control. And then it was to heal my relationship with food because both of us use it as a way to get educated. And we actually yeah. learned a lot about food that healed our relationship. Little things like we thought rice cakes were way healthier for weight loss than bread. And then we realized some of the rice cakes we had and bread we had were the same calories. Yeah. So little things that made us realize, oh, why have we been scared of bread but eating rice cakes when they're the same? Why do we eat this food instead of that food when they have the same macros? Or, oh, I thought this was so fattening, but it's actually this amount of calories. It was very educational for us to see that we weren't eating enough, that we needed to eat more to fuel ourselves, to fuel our bodies, to learn how to eat balanced. And using tracking that way really, really helped. We are not anti-tracking. No, not at all. We I are think not. Everyone needs to track for at least like, a year or two in their life just to understand portion sizes and everything yeah we are not anti-tracking by any means but there is a clear difference between tracking in a good way and tracking, yeah, tracking in a bad to way learn and tracking to restrict slash be in control yes and little things if you cannot go once a week without tracking your food and i mean actually you might not put it in my fitness pal but you're reading the label mentally adding up numbers yeah. i mean if you can truly not go one day a week without tracking your food that's probably where you're teetering on the edge of a problem yeah because there's no reason why you need to be that strict if you're not on competition prep there's mm -hmm. no reason or having a very 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 serious weight loss journey that's like very very serious yeah. um like doctor ordered kind of intense diet you're doing the average girl listening to this um which we're going to be talking just being clear we're talking to our average listener which is literally 18 to 24 year old girls genuinely healthy that's our <laughs> audience so you girls there's no reason why you need to track seven days a week 24 7 literally none yeah no no reason at all because at the end of the day if you know what you're eating from when you're tracking you'll probably do fine if you just eat a day and if you don't like literally eat out at restaurants for an entire day like three days in a row and let yourself do it yeah just do it go full send just do it and then wake up and realize that you're okay that's like one of the biggest things that like kind of took me to like do too like that it really does help um but number three is going to be your movement so a focus on exercise as a way of burning calories versus actually going to the gym because it's fun you enjoy it, you're improving overall and you're being competitive with yourself but if you're going to the gym Solely for like the calorie burns, the amount of exercise you're getting for the week, your amount of steps, like those two differentiate so much. That's a big word that I just said. I don't ever say that word. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so like those two differences in your type of workout are like two things to keep in mind. Like yeah. I go to the gym, do workout classes because they're fun. Like I'm enjoying them. If I like two years ago when I was like super into like the the calories burned and my watch and all that was going to like a workout class and saw that maybe I burned like 600 calories from that workout class. Oh, I would have been hyped, but I don't even wear like my watch half the times I'm at the gym anymore. Yeah. I go to the gym solely. Um, it's a competition with myself. It's being better than I was the day before. And it has nothing to do with calories burn. Like on an arm day, I probably burn like a hundred calories. I don't yeah. burn a lot of calories just like doing uh, like an arm workout um and I used to be so focused on that and it would feel good to see those high numbers or you didn't burn that much so you walk on the treadmill and you walk until it burns a certain calorie instead of just like doing what makes you feel good and like trusting yourself and there's so many other reasons to be in the gym and like the biggest way I got out of that was like literally don't wear the watch and just train for strength or if you don't like to strength train just get rid of the watch but, like, learning how to work out for strength over calories was huge. Huge. Like, and because, one, it's going to do the best for your physique anyways. Like, the cal what the calories are on your watch doesn't really matter, especially when it's only varying, like, 50 to 100 calories. It's literally not doing anything. Making better strength things for yourself will do so much more. Yeah. I really need to pee, but I'm going to say this one, and then you can go on a tangent. Okay. Later, okay? Um, number four, and this is one of my favorites, is food rules. Restricting your eating, your hours, the amount of food you're eating, or the types of food you're eating. Okay. Okay. Let me. Ah. 
Let me get ready for this one while Sam takes a piss. So as you guys know, right now I'm like pescatarian and I don't eat dairy. That is ethical and environmental reasons. It is not for anything related to diet. Um, I'll eat any type of food as long as it's not those because those are just personal choices of mine. Anyways, if you are doing gluten-free, ask yourself why. Be honest with your reasoning about that intermittent fasting why like there is no reason to put such huge labels on your diet for no reason especially when they're so out of pocket out of pocket and stupid like food combining stupid um what else keto stupid buzzwords for weight loss diets are really the main culprit here if it's like something that's going to make you lose weight and that's why you're doing it you need to just be in a calorie deficit and if you're doing a diet to gain weight you just need to be in a calorie surplus uh, we've done a podcast on that. That's all it comes down to is calories in, calories out. And overall, just eat a whole food diet. Being so strict about foods you can or cannot eat is truly just making your life miserable. And I get it if you want to follow a certain way of living in your house and the way you eat most of the time. Like some people really like Mediterranean diets. Some people like to eat more paleo like you like to focus your diet on certain things when you're at home and that that makes total sense and that's that's fine but if it gets to the point where you're like oh no I can't go out to dinner I'm paleo like really bitch for real you can find a restaurant that will like no but like not even like if you're not eating a certain way for like if it's not an allergy yeah or something like like I don't eat meat. Like that is like an environment or like some people have like religious reasons they don't eat meat. Cultural reasons they don't eat X, Y, Z. Yeah, you have to find accommodating restaurants. But like if you just like picked like some people eat like Mediterranean diet. You eat that during the day. You eat that when you make your breakfast, lunch, or dinner at home. You can go out for a donut. Mm-hmm. Like you'll be okay. Like yeah. there's no reason why you have to go out of your way to like make such dire rules or being like, Oh, you want to go to dinner at 7.30? I can't. I intermittent fast. Like, yeah. shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> like, respectfully, and shut the fuck up. I don't know if you touched on this because obviously I was just in the bathroom. But, like, also, like, the good versus bad foods. Like, labeling things as good mm. or bad. I didn't talk about that. Okay, yeah. Like, that's also another really big thing with food. And I used to do this all the time. Like, I thought carbs were the scariest thing. The biggest thing for me when I was, like, really, like, down bad, like, in my, like, restricted era of my life was mac and cheese mac and cheese i could literally not even look at it because <laughs> mine was, it was cereal like the worst thing ever like i was terrified of it my mom always made it we always had like buffalo chicken mac and cheese like everywhere i went there was mac and cheese and i was so scared of it yeah and like i was convinced it was a bad food if i had it like i was gonna gain like five pounds from just eating a bowl of mac and cheese yeah especially when not even realizing that something like mac and cheese like obviously like box processed crap is box processed crap but eat it if you want to eat it like without even thinking like there's so many ways you can make mac and cheese at home be a Mm -hmm. totally balanced meal like you can literally grab like bonza pasta like make your own cheese sauce and have like a totally nutritious balanced bowl of mac and cheese like no one label of food is a good or bad thing you can just like easily find ways to make literally everything fit and also knowing that like good food like if people say like broccoli is good for you if you ate only broccoli that'd be a horrible diet yeah like that's not good for you. That's awful. Yeah. Like, or just like little things, like nothing good. Like if you ate just a salad for every meal of like lettuce and dressing, some people are like, oh, that's good for you. That's awful for you. Yeah. That would be a horrible diet. You can't just because there's no way to label anything. Yeah, I know I agree. Also, some foods are good for your mental health and that is equally valid. Facts. That is equal or and good for like, like, I don't know. There's so many other reasons to eat food besides, like, gaining weight or losing weight. <laughs> yeah. There's so many reasons that make things good. Like, one thing about me, when I go on, like, trips or vacation or somewhere new, like, I love trying new things. Yeah. Like, like I love it. Like, it's like an event for me. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but, like, yeah. I, just, I find joy. When we were in Cabo, like, sitting down at restaurants, like, trying new, like, plates of food or, like, a dish that I've never tried before, like, that's fun. Right, especially when you get to the point of food freedom where you don't need to stuff your face with any food that you get because you're just vibing. Like, you can eat what you want to eat, don't eat what you want to eat, and, like, it's not so scary because you can just try things, eat things, and move on when before it was, like, 
wait, no, but like if I try that pizza, I'm going to eat the whole thing in one sitting because I can't control myself. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, you like now we can just like have a bite. Yeah. And move on. So we also did like a little TikTok on the podcast Instagram or the podcast TikTok. And we wrote a list of things that we thought were really, really toxic back in the day of like things that we did. We kind of touched on like some of them, but I'm going to like briefly go into them. So that way we can now transition into like what we do now. Yeah. How we got out of those stages and like what we do now to like transition into now mm. almost what like nine months of intuitive eating yeah um so yeah let's get into it um if you want to hear like more of us like describing these things watch the tiktok but i'm literally just gonna list them off from like one to eight um bringing the food scale on trips number two not counting a workout if i didn't have my watch start number three thinking about food literally 24 7 number four bringing condiments to restaurant number five tracking my vegetables um, number six, refusing to drink anything but water. Number seven, chewing gum or low calorie, like zero calorie um, candies. Number eight, body checking in every single mirror we pass. And those are just some of the many things that we did down when we were, you know, not in the best mm-hmm. mindset, um, body and food wise. And we obviously want to help you guys if anyone is struggling out there to get out of that mindset because it seems like with the traction that we were getting on that video a lot of you guys were wondering like how the hell do i get out of this mindset and like it's honestly like easier said than done now you're gonna think to like when we kind of like address like how to get out of it it's like yeah you can say those things but like how do i actually do it yeah it's like it's one of those things where it's like bitch like you really just got to do it like you really just need to do it and um do you want to like take it off yeah so you exactly what you said you need to throw do it and throw yourself into it and i want to make it clear this is not one day to the next Mm -hmm. i was deep down bad in this in like 2019 and i got out of it in 2022 yeah and i am perfectly out of it like i'm talking so perfect with my relationship with food right now in 2023 so this is like takes a while three to four year process i'm not saying one day to the next you're gonna be cured Mm -hmm. and you'll do each habit one by one obviously it's like a learning curve too you start to realize why what you're doing is now better than what you used to do yes if that makes sense yeah so some of them are easy things you can stop right now it doesn't mean your mind won't stop thinking about it but you can stop it bringing a food scale on a trip don't pack it yeah like get rid of the food scale boom take the batteries out of it like the batteries away yeah if you have that toxic relationship with your scale toss it give it to a friend don't done gone if you have a toxic relationship with your apple watch stop wearing it give it to your friend like so that you can't even put it back on give it to someone lock it up things like that you could literally do one day to the next because you just get rid of the thing and you can't use it and your mind will probably think about it but give it one or two days and i promise you'll be okay yeah um and then the other things for me um the thinking about food was a huge one Mm -hmm. and that really took a whole lot of inner self work of letting go and trusting my body to eat when I wanted to and knowing that like I would make a plate of food and still be hungry because I was eating such low calorie meals and finally allowing my body to get to the point of like eat what is going to be enough food to fill you up because when you actually eat meals that are satisfying to you and your body isn't going crazy constantly hungry it was crazy to me that i didn't need to think about food all the time i could not fathom a world where the only thing i would think about was food i was thinking about what i was going to eat if it was healthy if it wasn't healthy if my breakfast was healthy was it too much was it too little i would go crazy about food all day long i would literally wake up and think about like but what am i gonna eat for dinner and like i was insane like i was literally crazy and all it took was like really really diving into trusting myself and eating until i was full And, like, letting myself really do that. Yeah. Now, for myself, it was coming from a place of, like, I was counting my calories, but I didn't really know anything about it. Like, I was coming from a place where protein, what the fuck is that? So, I needed to learn what a protein was, what a a carb was, what a fat was, and how to use those things to my advantage. Because at the time, I was eating, like, 1,200 calories. Just calories. Like, I don't know where those calories were coming from. It could have been all carbs and fats and no protein. And so once I started to like really educate myself and follow like content creators and just learn a little bit more, that's when I started to incorporate more protein because I was like, oh shit, like I need to be eating protein. Like I want to build muscle. Like I was a string bean at the time, but like 
eating more protein really helped me realize that like, wow, I'm satisfied. I'm full for a few hours. Like that little meal that I had, like I literally used to mm-hmm. make like a, a bag of the cauliflower gnocchi, like half, yeah. a, half a bag of it with just yeah. veggies and no yeah. protein. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well then I started to transition into like adding more protein into my meals, being more satisfied throughout the day. And it really helped me become like more on like a schedule with eating, like rather than being like, oh my God, mm-hmm. like I just ate, I'm hungry again, but I have to wait until lunch at like 1 p.m. So learning more about the food rather than it just being a calorie number is super important. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. That's a really good point. Like I was eating um, 1,200 calories. That's what I had in my little app on my phone. And my lunch at school was like carrots, fruit, like it was carbs and barely if that like it was like no food and i would go through the whole day at school thinking about what i was gonna eat when i get home Mm -hmm. and i was like if you just brought a fucking well-balanced lunch that would actually keep you full you wouldn't spend the whole day thinking about dinner like (laughs) and it also it that wasn't one day to the next because it kind of took my body like when you're in that like severe always hungry phase your body kind of feels like that for a long time like it took me a while to get out of that like my body actually trusts that I'm going to eat and I'm not starving. Like, I feel like my body was constantly like, bitch, we're starving and like, we're going to shut down, like eat. So it took a while of me actually consistently eating enough. I feel like for my body to trust me and be like, all right, we'll calm down now. Like you don't need to be like searching for food. We're good. But that was a huge one for me as well as body checking in every mirror, which was discipline at its finest guys every single time like literally trigger warning every single time i went to the bathroom i looked at my stomach in the mirror every single time i don't care where i was without fail every single time i would do it and i knew it was a problem it was happening and i knew it was an issue and it would make me so upset and the amount of discipline that it took to simply every single time actively think and stop and that's just habit reinforcing like Mm -hmm. that was just like i had to actively discipline myself every single day to stop yeah i I didn't really like i had that issue but not like as yeah no mine was but mine was like really like i would like i'd be like oh my god my abs still there but like i didn't really have abs it was more just like am i bloated but um yeah so what's like kind of another one i wanted to touch on i had it in in my head but now i forget now i'm looking at the list to remind myself um oh a big thing for me, like we said, was like the chewing a gum or like over like zero calorie like things just to like suppress my appetite or like vaping like a black coffee. Like vaping also really, suppresses your appetite. What was it? Vaping. Yeah, vaping. Like anything that was like trying to suppress my appetite. Listen up right now. If you are suppressing your appetite already, you're not in a good place where you probably shouldn't be suppressing your appetite. You're probably suppressing your appetite because you just don't want to eat because you feel like you're eating too much but realistically you're not eating enough like once you start to like like I I, it really sucks because a lot of these things it's just like I want to say it like I want to like shake you to your core and just be like wake up come on just like eat food but like I do understand it's like really fucking hard yeah if I were to look back on myself like two to three i wish someone did that to me i I wish i could just fucking no i get it because we got a comment um someone commented like i love you but like the way you just said like just eat like it's so insensitive and i get where that's coming from because i know this is very serious a lot of people do have different like there's different sensitivity like a lot sensitivities. Of people are more sensitive to certain things like i'm not like i'm not a sensitive person but also so. there's levels and severity yeah. to this there's a difference between like severe eating disorder where you are like in the hospital like that level of severity versus like the slippery slope of toxic patterns and someone might be able to stop before you get to that severe point Mm -hmm. and i feel like we're kind of speaking to the people that are on the edge or like probably don't even realize that that don't even realize that don't even realize wow this was a wake-up call for me because i had no idea and i get like some of you might sound insensitive but the the truth is the things i would have done for someone to do that to me because no one did that Everyone to me. Everyone made the comments of you're so healthy while wow, you're eating a salad. That's so healthy. Wow, mm-hmm. you're going to the gym for a second time. You're today. so healthy. That's so healthy. While your lunch is literally only vegetables, you're so healthy. And in my head, I wanted to be like, I'm not okay. Yeah. But like, I I didn't tell anyone. But like, people were just praising me for it. And I wish right. someone was like, girl, what the fuck? You're not okay. 
and they did it and it's not their fault because a lot of people didn't know like my family didn't know my boyfriend at the time didn't know but i wish someone did and like a lot of my friends were equally as fucked up as me so it was like the blind leading the blind like and tr- like trust us too like we have like a huge sensitive spot for people that are like in this mindset of life because we've been there but like what i will say right now is if you are someone that suppresses your appetite because of a vape because of gum because of like a zero calorie snack or like gummy thing like tic tacs or something like i want to challenge you this week if you notice you're going to grab for one of those things because you want to suppress your appetite instead of doing that grab a snack and it doesn't have to be a big snack it can be something as small as like a string cheese or grapes like it doesn't have to be this yeah. big scary bowl of food like it just needs to be something small like yeah. i would rather you grab like a handful of grapes than to grab your vape literally or to grab a pack of gum instead of like a little thing of yogurt like mm-hmm. there are just so many easy like transitional things that you could do and i, I want to challenge you guys to do that this week like literally do it and another thing also too with like fear foods that I um, always used to do with my clients was write these fear foods right now. Like stop this podcast episode right now. If you have thought in your head during this episode, like, oh my God, I have like so many fear foods, write them down on your phone and each week attempt to like check off one each week. So like if you have like hamburgers, pizza, mac and cheese, cereal, all on that list, like Go out to eat one day or even like you can make it at home and order that thing so that way you are like slowly accomplishing. Like I'm not saying you have to like meal prep it for the week. Like make burgers for the week. But just like once during the week, like go get something like that. Yeah, there's a lot of TikTok accounts um, of girls that do that and document it. Um, So highly recommend looking it up. Follow some of those girls. I've seen a few of them. Um, You can even start doing it yourself because there's, there's a lot of accountability that comes with filming something and putting it on the internet like um so that could be like a good motivator to like even if you don't even have followers like start a series post it film it post it like that accountability of getting something out there and you never know who you could help but also following girls that are doing that could be huge for your mindset literally search eating fear foods there's girls that are doing like eating a new fear food every day for the year like eating like there's girls that really do this as a series and like work through it and like you could i would highly recommend um following them what i was gonna say about suppressing hunger would you ever suppress like any other cue from your body? Like if you were thirsty, you'd never be like, I'm going to try to not drink water Yeah. or like oh, I have to pee. Like I'm going to try to not pee. The only time you should ever be doing that is like you're on a long road trip in the car and there's no way you can be getting like food or the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then, you know, we're surviving other than those scenarios. Why would you ever be like, I have to pee, but I'm not going to pee. I'm going to try to like suppress my urge to pee. No, you would pee because you trust your body tells you to pee, you have to pee. You're thirsty, you drink water. But for some reason, your body tells you you're hungry and you don't want to eat. Like, you know, it's the same exact thing as any other. Like, you're tired, you go to bed. Like, (laughs) you follow your body for everything else that it tells you. But for some reason, you don't trust that if it's hungry, that you're actually hungry. And Mm. all the like, the accounts are like, if you're hungry, you're probably just thirsty you're probably just bored. No, you're probably hungry. Yeah. You're probably hungry. I And it's very common for young girls to be hungry because your metabolism is so fucking fast. Yeah, you need like, to eat like so much. Eat. And you guys like play sports and you're in the exactly. gym. Like you need to eat. And like, yeah, maybe you're in college and like, oh, you're drinking and you don't want to eat. You probably walk 20,000 steps to class. When I was on my college campus, I was walking like crazy. I lived on a fourth floor walk up. My Apple Watch at the end of the day was through the roof. Like you need to eat. It's not a little task. Like, and even if you are in college, like drinking, partying, bro, we would walk to the bars. We'd walk home from the bars. We'd walk, we were, I, I think I might've still been in a deficit because I wasn't eating even though I was drinking so much because we were on the move but yeah if that whole who was it it was a blog of Lottie's video and she made a video saying like the banana test if you're hungry ask yourself would I eat a banana right now and if you say no that means you're not really hungry you're just bored no that no that just means you don't want a banana like Like, what like that I'm like that is so dumb like I used to think that way. I was like, I could just be bored. No, I totally know now the difference between being hungry and being bored. Because sometimes I want a bored snack. 
Like sometimes I'm like I'm bored. We could go get food. You know what I mean? Like, oh, 100. Mom's sitting and home now, all day, yeah, and I'm going to eat. But like now, snacks. but now I know the difference. Yeah. And I used to. People would always say that if you're hungry, you're probably thirsty. No, don't talk to me like I'm dumb. I'm hungry. Like mm-hmm. you're not a baby. You know, <laughs> like you know if you're hungry or if you're thirsty. Yeah. I just think that stuff is so stupid. I know. Like no one's like if you have to pee, like you might just be thirsty. No. You have to be like, it's dumb. Yeah. And um, so I guess we can kind of just jump right into like the transition between the two, because obviously it's not a quick jump, but this conversation, it's going to be a quick jump. But yeah, we, we only have an hour. <laughs> but, but disclaimer, like it's going to take a few years to for you to, you know, get to the point where you now are sitting down with yourself and you're like, fuck it. Like, I don't want to track my food anymore. And for my girlies that are maybe at that mindset of like, I've been tracking for a few years. Like, I have the physique I want. Like, I don't really care to be tracking anymore. Like, it's getting boring. Like, it's too much. Like, it takes up too much time. I feel you because mm-hmm. that was us this past summer. We went into summer being like, we want to enjoy summer. We do not want to have to be focusing on food, tracking all our food. Like, we're going to have a lot of boat days. We're going to have a lot of lake days. Like, travel. Travel. Like, you're telling me I have to, like, sit down and track my lunch before I, like, pack it up for, like, going onto the lake. Like, no. So Mm -hmm. we are now, since June or July, have not been tracking and we've learned quite a bit of intuitive eating since then. And what is intuitive eating, you ask? That is literally just kind of honoring your hunger cues, not really thinking about food, um, you know, eating what you're craving type mindset and just literally not tracking it at all. Um, So now at the beginning when I like at least started, I didn't... I, for the first few months, was tracking just protein, and I was very open about that, like, on, like, my pages. I was like, I'm just tracking protein. Like, I want to make sure I'm eating enough protein because I jumped from, like, tracking my food to not tracking, and then for, like, the first, like, few weeks, I was still so hungry, like, at the end of the night, and I was like, what the fuck? Like, why am I still so hungry? So then I started tracking my food again in terms of my protein, and I was like, oh, shit, like, I'm literally only getting, like, 100 grams of protein. Like, let's track my protein, and that will be it. So, like, if that's something that you need to do, to kind of jump into it, um, do it. It helps you kind of like ease out of it. Taylor on the other end, just, I think you right. Just went right into intuitive eating. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, just couldn't be bothered, but that's the thing. It's like, it's your journey. and It's going to take you a little bit. Like it doesn't need to be perfect right off the bat. Like you're going to take a little bit of time to figure out what works for you. And that's totally fine. Um, for me, it just worked. I was like, whatever. I don't care need track protein need track protein like is what it is yeah so you know now i would say at the very beginning like i was very much like needing to stay on my schedule of the way i was eating like i was like still eating the same types of food that i was Mm -hmm. eating when i was tracking at the same hours of the same day and realistically like that's not intuitive eating like i'm just like still eating like same hour same types of food but just not tracking it yeah like that's not really intuitive eating like intuitive eating is like you're literally like listening to your hunger cues like like if i was tracking like i would have had a snack because i'm tracking to hit my macros but like if i'm not hungry i'm not gonna force myself to have a snack so now where we are now compared to where we were when we first started doing like the whole intuitive eating is like now if I don't want a snack, I'm not going to have a snack. I'm not going to yeah. force myself to have a snack. Yeah. I will just have like a bigger lunch that will hopefully help me, you know, be more satisfied and more full. Yeah. Or if you want two snacks, you have two snacks. Yeah, or two snacks. maybe we were like, instead of being like, oh, post-workout meal, like you need it at this time. Like maybe I actually wait a long time and after I work out, I'm not hungry. Yeah. I'm not hungry right after I work out. I'm actually going to shower and do my makeup and run an errand and then eat lunch. Like who knows? Yeah. Like you can do whatever you want. Um, And I think what you said about how we were kind of ate the food we ate while we were tracking after. I think there's something to be said for that, for the fact that at that point too, like it was also just easy to do that because we were actually eating foods we liked when we were tracking. Yeah. So there wasn't much of a need yeah. to be like, now I'm intuitive eating. I'm like not going to eat this lunch anymore. Yeah, I liked, I, I liked the, the yeah, day. I liked the lunch I was eating just cause I wasn't tracking. Didn't mean I was going to yeah. switch the food. I enjoyed that lunch. Yeah. So, and I think that's just a testament to when we were tracking, we were actually tracking in a healthy way mm-hmm. because it wasn't like there was a food I 
was trying not to eat the foods I was eating was just yeah, foods I, I liked. Said that I didn't know if that like came out that way or what. No, it did. Like I just felt I just was like, yeah, I mean, like I wasn't eating dinner I liked, so I had no reason to change it. Um, but it also for me was just like those little things of like, do I want like something really carb heavy or like the other day I was eating like what was I eating? Oh, I was making like tuna salad and I ran out of bread. So I ate it in lettuce wraps. Okay, that's like low carb. And maybe if I was tracking, I wouldn't have hit my carbs for the day. But whatever, that just sound good. Like, who cares? Like, who yeah. cares if there wasn't enough carbs in that meal? Like, it's fine. Like, I didn't have bread because I didn't want to go to the grocery store. So I put it in lettuce wraps and we'll live. Yeah. Just like little things like that where like, who cares if you don't have like the fat or like... An, you're off 10 grams of protein when if you were to track it in your whole day it doesn't matter like literally opening the fridge and being like what sounds good right now that is what i'm going to eat and actually no i wouldn't even say that because you do have to grocery shop and you know once you decide on meals for the week you decide on meals so i guess mm. we kind of do the more intuitive part when we're grocery shopping <laughs> because you know what we have in the fridge is like what we bought a week yeah. ago <laughs> like, so i feel like i'm grocery shopping and i'm just like this sounds good. Yeah, like I'll eat this. One thing for me that's changed a lot though with like tracking versus intuitive eating is like the like quality of the meals. Like yeah, back, back when I was tracking, a lot of my meals were quote unquote like macro friendly, so they were very simple, but they were still really yummy. Like don't get me wrong, if you go to my recipes from a year ago, like my recipes were fucking dank. Like they were great, they were awesome, they were yummy. But now my recipes are more complex. Like there's more little things added in. There's more like diversity and like just like everything that I'm eating like because I don't want to track all those little small little things in my meals I don't care and that's why another thing like I love cooking I love being in the kitchen cooking making new recipes filming the recipes posing them for you guys but that's another reason why I no longer wanted to track because like I want to have more fun with my recipes like uh I'm trying to look for an example um an example is like chicken my chicken parm like cutlet things like if I was tracking, I would have, like, in each bowl, measured out the egg, measured out the breadcrumb, measured out the flour, and then, like, measured out the fucking chicken cutlet, like, the raw chicken cutlet, and then, like, made my food. But now, I just, like, when I make my bowls of things, like, I pour the chicken cutlets, or the ch chicken cutlets, the fucking breadcrumb into a bowl. I put an egg into a bowl, flour into a bowl, and, like, I don't track any of those things, and it just, like, makes cooking way more fun. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, that's another thing, too, is, like, when you're not tracking, you have more fun with it. Like, um, another thing too is my oats. I put seeds on my oats now. So I do, cause I'm seed cycling. Um, and I also really love like the seeds on my oats. Like the te texture of it is just so good. But like, if I was tracking, I probably wouldn't have done those things. Cause that would have just been like extra calories or whatever. Yeah, cause like pumpkin macros. seeds are high in fat. Yeah. Just like add it into my bowl and I want to make sure I'm hitting my pro or carb or fat goals or whatever. And so those are just like little things that have been added into my like meals that wouldn't have been because I wanted my meals to be more macro friendly. Yeah. And for me, it's like also little things of just like um, convenience, like of intuitive eating. Like today I ate again. I'm talking about like tuna salad again. I had tuna salad and crackers. I didn't put the crackers in a bowl. I ate them out the box and I just used them until yeah. the dip was gone and put it away. And I didn't measure them out. I don't know how many I ate. Um, don't know how many carbs it was. I literally just ate them until the dip was God put the thing back in the cabinet. And before I would have like taken out a bowl, poured them out. And it's like, oh my God, then you're like dirtying a bowl. And like, so I was like, it's just like unnecessary. Like, yeah. it's just not quite necessary. And all those little things, when they're just like fucking time consuming, like, and we have other things to be worried about, but it just feels so free to just eat whatever the hell you want when you want it. And it's a great life to live. Um, victoria garrick or i don't know victoria brown she just got married so i think her username is different but she makes a lot of videos about this and it's like she goes really in depth on it on being like okay like what exactly do i want am i, am I in the mood for this am i in the mood for this and like really goes in depth on following her hunger cues um which like you might need that like in-depthness to like follow and get inspo from but for us it's really just as simple like it's hard to even talk about because it's just eating when you're hungry yeah. And it's 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 almost hard to talk so much about it because we're simply the, eating when we want to. Being like more in tune with your body and like really eating what you're craving. Like, bitch, that's fucking hard. Like I ain't going to the grocery store 
four to five days out of the week. That's, like, see, I go to the grocery store once or twice, and that's it. That's what I'm saying about how, like, like... What do I want for the week? That's what I was saying about how sometimes, like, in those videos of intuitive eating, it's like, open the fridge, what do you really want? Okay, listen, sometimes I don't have what I really want because I don't have just a grocery store in my house. So sometimes we don't have exactly what I'm craving, but you still have to make it work. So it's a little bit... It's slightly unrealistic to be like, try to be in tune with exactly what your body wants in all points in time. Because sometimes my body like really wants avocado toast. I don't have avocados. So can't have that. Scratch that. Like you got to have something else. Like we just don't have it. So definitely like planning out the week of like, this sounds good. I'm going to eat that. But also little things like maybe I plan out. I'm going to do wraps for lunch. But one of the days I'm like, fuck it. I have pancake mix. I'm making pancakes. Like yeah. doing little things like that of like, fuck it. That yeah. sounds better. I'm literally going to make pancakes today because I can't be bothered. Or like sometimes we come home late and you're like, I'm having cream of rice for dinner. Like yeah. just because like that honestly sounds better. better. Don't feel like cooking. Little things like that. Um, but yeah, obviously you got to work with what you got. So, I mean, if you want to be so in tune with your cravings, you're going to the grocery store every time you crave something. Props. Yeah. <laughs> not, but store. not well, I, mean, I like it going once but like in the middle of the week when i'm like oh, i have to go again yeah it. yeah um but it's a crazy life when you realize that you can literally just eat when you're hungry yeah it's crazy yeah and another thing too that i also want to like keep in mind with the whole intuitive eating thing is like also too we have goals still like physique wise gym wise so like when it comes to intuitive eating, you're not kind of, like, just giving up on any of those, like, in terms of, like, what you're eating and what you're consuming. Like, I'm still eating very high-protein-based, like, meals and snacks because, like, I know that is going to help me down the road with, like, what my goals are. It's not like I'm, like, giving up on fucking eating protein all the time and I'm just, like, eating, like, all... Yeah. Whatever. I'm, like, literally, like... Like, I don't, like... Well, no, because there's a difference between cravings, like, fun cravings and what your body needs. When you're intuitive eating mindful eating your body needs nutritious food you can't that is not ignored your body needs nutrition the point isn't just to eat crap because a lot of people say oh i can't intuitive eat because i would just eat like crap all the time like i would eat pizza for breakfast lunch and dinner like i would just I, i couldn't intuitive eat because all i my body's telling me i want ice cream and pizza you think that but that's because one, you're probably in that obsessed with food binge restrict phase. Like your body wants nutritious food. And again, you can make pizza at home and you could make nutritious pizza. Like we make pizzas all the time. Mm-hmm. Like you can easily be craving pizza and eat pizza every single day and make it at home and obviously make it nutritious and more cost effective and just make it at home. Um, I eat ice cream every single day. So yeah, you can create your body might want ice cream. I have ice cream literally every single day. And if I don't have it, I'm upset. (laughs) Like, and so there's things that, yeah, you're going to crave it and you can eat it, but your body does want structure and balance and nutrition. Like eating not so great food doesn't feel great in your body. Yeah, exactly. So, and oh, another thing too, that we get like asked a lot is like, oh, I, I'm trying to intuitive eat, but, like, I still keep thinking in the back of my head, like, the numbers or the calories or whatever. It's just like, just keep pushing. Like, I promise you, just keep pushing with an intuitive eating lifestyle. And at some point, you're going to, like, realize, I'm not really thinking about those numbers anymore. So just, like, keep pushing with it. Keep doing it. Don't give up on intuitive eating and jump back into counting calories because you think it's not going to work. Like, it is going to work at some point down the road. Like, you just need mm-hmm. to keep doing it. And few months down the road like you are going to be so mindful or not like mindful but mindless of like the the numbers and stuff that you are going to be intuitive eating so yeah it's it's a really freeing life to not worry about every single thing you're doing like to be able to go to a restaurant and eat the bread at the table to eat the chips and salsa to not worry about liquid calories those things will make your life so incredibly more enjoyable that you won't even know what to do with yourself um, just looking back on the way I used to live versus now, I just truly don't know how I functioned yeah. um, living like that because I I literally just promise you there is light at the end and you are capable of living a life where food doesn't control you. And for us, that really took 
years, but right now it's just not tracking and taking that knowledge with you, but not letting it like control you. Like the knowledge should be a tool, not consuming your life. Yeah. Sorry, I just got like a DM. It's all good. Sam, your recent YouTube video is going to get copyrighted with that I music, might, right? Question my mark? recent YouTube video got copyrighted. Yeah, same. At Boutina Lay, I was just talking and there was music in the background. That music got copyrighted. Yeah. I was like, bruh. Also, I just got asked on a, like a date tonight. Should I go? With? Oh, yeah. So do you want to hang out or go, go to South Congress and walk around and hit up different South by Southwest events? Yeah. Should TikTok, I do that? TikTok boy messaged me and goes... Hey, I was hoping the weather would change tomorrow, because lo- but it doesn't look like it. Let's grab dinner, though. So I have dinner tonight and tomorrow, so I say Taylor goes on her dinner date, too. Yeah, I mean, like, going to different South by events could be cool. Get free drinks. Oh, it's not dinner? You just No, he was like, do you want to go to, like, South-, South Congress and walk around and, like, hit up random South by Southwest events? Yeah. I love South Congress. Look at us. Look at us! <laughs> See? And look, I'm going to go, maybe enjoy a free beverage, a free snack. Oh, I would have been freaking out about dinner in the middle of the week. Out of oh a restaurant. God. I would have been No freaking, dates freaking would decent. actually know like to think about the fact that like someone like right now, like now I'm just like, oh my god, yay, they have free snacks and free drinks. I'd be like, Oh my god. I'd be like, Oh my god, wait, so what am I gonna eat for dinner? Because yeah. then I might be getting free yeah. snacks. It's like, no. So what I'm gonna do now, perfect example. I'm gonna eat my dinner as normal. And then if there's anything that I care to eat or drink, you can you you eat it or you drink it. It's like a crazy concept. It really is. <laughs> that you don't that I'm gonna eat a normal ass dinner and then eat if I wanna eat after that. It's fucking crazy. I know. So guys, fucking if this insane. podcast episode helped you at all, please let us know in the DMs. Yeah. Like, I really it it makes me happy. It makes yeah, me I like, my soul tingle. Honestly blacked out and have like no idea what the fuck I said. No, this was a really good episode. I'm so happy. I think we we've it. been talking. Hold on, please hold. Like an hour and a half. I took that photo at three. We've been having a lot of long episodes lately. An hour and 21 minutes. Yeah, no, we have. And these people out here with their 30-minute episodes, fuck out of here. Yeah. Inconsistent. Fuck out of here. Inconsistent ones, too. Boo, tomato, tomato, Literally. tomato. We're like the only fitness... Well, we're not really fully fitness, but we're like everything. But like fitness podcast-wise, that's like so on it, so on top of it. Yeah, like kind consistent. Kind of on the back. Mm. Alrighty, guys. Well, Alrighty. make sure to rate this a five star. Follow us on all social media platforms so you're up to date with everything, especially if you loved the weekly catch up because we do so much outside of the podcast with our life. So make sure to be following us on everything. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Bye.